duplicated so right click on the name of the of the material save as a night blue so it's exactly the same material it's just going to be like a, a blue version of this material so i guess we can just copy this guy and put it in here right reuse the color again yeah let's see what that looks like press 3 shift t oh well we need the active material to work to do shift t there you go shift t and this guy too there you go man like we got our blue blue window with no parallax on it now and yes it does annoy me that i do have parallax on this guy even though you don't you don't see it but well you can only do so much on a tutorial but um try to be a, a, a bit clean with this if you can um let's see here it's looking pretty good i might ma need to make another guy this so the blue looks a little bit more vibrant yeah mm -hmm. got a control layer here let's bump up the contrast a little bit and um, sorry if you're a little bit lost. Um, like in the beginning, I was a little bit torn if I should even make this tutorial as in depth as as this like opening, opening textures that I made them off screen, um, and just like having you watch all this. Um, so I know it might look a little bit conf confusing to see someone else's PSD files like like this, but I'm basically just like duping. A, um, a texture that already exists and just tweaking them a, li a little bit and re-exporting them and bringing them back into the new, new materials that we are creating here like this example that we did here this is basically the same blue it's just a more sat saturated and more contrasty version of it let's try and bump up this a little bit hmm sometimes I do get caught up tweaking these values too much i mean go back and forth back and forth back and forth like you you can just have a lot of fun with this um let's see let's load what is it let's load the blue version on this guy here see what yeah that's way better yeah i do like how that um that sat saturation is coming across and the contrast uh, it doesn't look as flat and pale as it did before so that's pretty cool all right so so this guy here needs to be so if you're wondering why I have two different prefabs, it's because it's basically two different materials. One of them you can see inside the little slivet in the, cur the curtains and the other one you cannot. So we're gonna have to open the prefab like we did before and save as, save it as the night version. Recent files. Hey, my dog is saying hi in, ca in case you're wondering. <laughs> you want to say hi to Bolt, guys? That's Bolt. Hi. You watching the tutorial? Yeah. Okay, so you want to apply. All right, so you want to apply. Yes, yeah, exactly. You want to apply the night version of this guy, but we're going to have to switch. Wait. I'm lost. go and again if you shift right click with the pointer with the with the mouse um, you capture the material into the uh, active material window this is really handy so you don't you don't need to browse every single material it's always really handy all right so save an orange version of this guy and let's load the orange version instead of the blue one here. So for that, just type, wait, window, 
oh yeah i do like to filter out by uh, stuff that that only exists on my mod um when i'm looking for my own materials but i can I guess they pop right there so it's fine the missive of 1.2 and now i can finally go into our prefab and which one is it uh, Sorry, I think I'm getting confused in my own materials here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I mean, there's not that many. There's only two, but um, if you start having so many variants of it, blue version or orange version, it starts getting kind of crazy. But it is worth it. I think um, our eyes, our human eyes, are really good at capturing uh, repetition. So sometimes I do like to spend some time creating um, just different copies of the same material and just giving them different hues and different tints like like this just to break up the repetition it's kind of tedious sometimes but um, you'd be surprised man like um, it does get across as, um, as a good touch usually yeah there you go yeah tweak the uh, displacement of this guy a little bit I don't, I don't want to get too caught up with this I wonder if I can just actually get rid of the, the, the displacement and use a color what, the, what does that look like uh, it's too flat I don't think that works at all yeah yeah let's bring our texture back by clicking the little button under the emissive but actually nah I don't like it let's bring it back Mm -hmm. Emissive is at one. You can tint it, by the way. You can tint um, both layers, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool that you can do that. Wait, what am I doing here? So, you want to load. I don't think that's that's gonna work it's just it's really flat I wish I had time to to create a new parallax texture here um, I'm actually using uh, one of the default parallax textures from f -Live Alex. and if you're wondering how to do that you just need to open you can um, unpack um, the uh, contents of f -Live 2 textures and uh, reverse engineer them too And uh, use them in your own uh, PSDs, your own textures. They're really be beautiful textures. I think they did a killer job. And uh, even for this scene, when I started making this this scene, um, I did wanted to make something that looked um, that stood on its own. You know, that like didn't really um, feel like it was in the universe of F Life, of course, but. Um, I did want it to have the same level of fidelity as um, the F-Life uh, shipping maps do because um, as you probably know when you play shit in VR man like you really get close to the, to the materials and the props and whatnot so if the stuff has low fidelity you can definitely tell especially when um, some parts of the environment that you're playing in have high fidelity and others don't it's pretty egregious man like your eyes are trained for, for, for that like you you can totally tell it doesn't look good so um, for a lot of the new uh, materials that I created for this scene I did make make sure that um, they do have a good distribution of noise all right so I guess that's that. I think I'm, I'm, I have spent way too long fucking around with that parallax. I do ap apologize for that, but um, that's uh, that's making art for you folks. Sometimes you win, you win some battles, you lose others. All right, let's see here. I think I might have both these windows being lit up like that. So I copied the one from the right and deleted the old one there you go this is starting to come together guys look at this that's awesome 
Let's see here. What do I do about that guy? Shift, right click, night version. I think I might turn that off. Yeah, notice how I did that. I just selected the, the, the prefab and I browsed and I basically brought back the old version um, from my regular map. So this prefab here, I wonder if we do a glow on this guy, right? You know what? Let's try it. So let's bring up window bottom one, open this guy, select it, press shift A to focus, save as to save another copy, add night to the name, select the window, and uh, open the material that already exists, save as, and add night to the same material. And I do want it to be kind of like warmish kind of color. I do not want this to be blue at all. Like I said, I want to keep blue to the build to that orangey building on the right. So I'm just gonna call it orange right right away. Just 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 for like naming sake. I'm starting to have a lot of different materials now. So when when even I confuse myself, I do like to be very uh, specific with 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 my names. Mm, there you go, Night Orange, 3, double click on the asset, Shift T to apply, and back to my portal map. Whoa, I have a lot of stuff open. You know what? I should probably clean this. Uh, no, yeah. Like I said, you cannot close individual maps. It's a bug in the editor. So... I need to do this. I need to cl close everything and open the map back up. But it's fairly fast. I do love how fast this editor is. You can just open stuff really fast. All right, so select all instances of this tutorial, sorry, of this prefab, and apply, apply the guy that we just copied, that we just created. There we go. Let's bring that material back up and let's see what we can do to it it's kind of blurry yeah I'm not a fan of that guy hmm maybe we can do something about it <laughs> yeah I'm not a fan of how that edge is like obviously blurry and uh, if I can see it in the editor then I could totally see it in VR but um, but like I said maybe not I mean when we when we work on the post process for this we we're gonna hide a lot of shit with bloom you know so let's see if i can um con yeah uh, again control g uh in case you if you forgot control g you open the facts the fast texturing tool and let me see if i can uh no that's not gonna work yeah when i made this texture i wish i would have made um instead of just like one slivet i wish i, I would have made two because you can like you can sort of like tell that butterfly sort of effect there you can tell it's like it's mirrored but it, i think you can only tell if you really look look for it so i think it's good enough but uh i am going to try to hide it by reducing the intensity of it by reducing the material one material one is the curtain by the way and material two is the back parallax. There you go. And again, uh, if you are confused by what these parallax ma ma materials are, um, just to refer to the uh, intro, intro to uh, source two, where I, I am gonna go over the the creation of these materials uh, it's simpler than that you think it's basically like you, you get this kind of like parallaxy look to it it looks like it has an interior i'm a fan of this there is a lot of stuff you can do with these guys you can just straight off just do like like shop fronts and um doors windows of course like like we're doing here um yeah folks get created creative with this shader it's really awesome stuff so let's see. Um, let's see, 
I don't know if I like all of these guys being on. Yeah, let's turn it off. See, see if that looks better. And this guy, it, I'm gonna re revert to 04. Hmm. What do you think? You think that's better or worse? You prefer it on. I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Whoa, I'm gonna have to fix this, ain't I? So this is a static overlay that I made originally for the for the daytime map. Is something wrong with the shader though. I think I'm using the let's see what I'm using. Oh I'm using additive. Hmm. Well, let's fix that. Right click, save as. And just like the, the windows underscore night in front of the name, save, uh, let me close material editor, browse, select the text night, select the static overlay, and shift T, just like, there you go, just like the, um, the regular material shift T works here too. So let's just find a way to work around this problem. Translucent, opaque, multiply. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Additive should not be doing this, but let me do an opacity on this guy. Maybe this is a hack. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I should trying to look for a proper fix but um, hey whatever dude if it fixes it it fixes it <laughs> all right so let's fix this gift shop sign as well right click open material save as call it the same name only with night name let's save that and uh, same thing as what we did to the to the other guy opacity at 0 0.1 select it on the active material and shift T to apply it uh, whoops I got it here there you go uh, there you go next one additive let me compare so what did I do it's an additive and oh I edited the model, model tint and not the opacity scale. That's why it didn't work. See, that's what happens when you rush, folks. All right, so this one is going to need to be a little bit beneath, and it's still a bit too glowy, but I do like how you can still read the text. So um, so you know what? It's kind of cool that it's kind of glowy. You can actually read it. There you go. should probably bake, and uh, we'll see what this looks like. Hello guys, welcome back to part two of our lighting search two tutorial. This is looking pretty pretty good. We just got a fresh new bake here. Do a fly around the map. These light maps are really pretty good so far. This area is looking kind of dark. We'll get around to fix that later. Maybe we'll add some some bounce lighting or something. Um, liven this place up a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely that corner is definitely too, too, too dark. This middle area though is looking pretty good. Um, a lot of these houses are still looking kind of dead, and we can easily mitigate that by lighting these windows up. So, same process as before. Uh, we're just opening these prefabs up, saving them as a underscore night version. <clears throat> and um, we already created the material, so we just need to add it to this new to, to, um, prefab here. We want the, either the orange or the night version. Which one is it? Pretty sure it's the night version, but we can try that. Remember, pressing 3 to go into polygon mode, double click to select all faces, and shift T to apply the selected material. Let's try this guy instead, see what it looks like. And 
still has the old version, so we're going to have to switch that. Select all similar prefabs, browse, and right next to it is the night version. There you go. Looking pretty good already. We already tweaked the material on the other one, so we don't need to tweak, tweak it again. Just apply it. Exactly the same material as the all the other windows. This is the guy here. Let's try and reduce the emissive a little bit. You don't want it to be too strong. Sometimes I get caught up just going back and forth with this, with these values. I guess we all suffer from from that. Um, I do enjoy tweaking these things as I go. Sometimes I'm flying around the map and, and I see something wrong and I'll, I'll just fix it then or tweak it so it looks better. Um, and this is, I mean, it's it's a pleasurable way to work, guys. Like um, your whole map or scene or whatever you're working on is your canvas, you know. Um, you should never work just like on a little corner and uh, keep working on it, keep working on it, keep working on it at, until that little, little corner is perfect, whatever perfect means, and then move on. Uh, no, you should be jumping around. So let's see. Place this spotlight here. I wonder if this can look good. Almost like the um, the interior is so bright and the exterior is so dark. Um, these windows can actually give off some light. Yeah, this can look good. I really like how the light and the spec catches up on the, um, on those plants there. By turning off baked in uh, light indexing, you will be making this light really cheap um but i gotta admit that i really like how the spec works on the plants there and on the ground like if you look at that ground cobblestones there you really see the spec working there um so it might be justifiable to pay the price for this being um uh light index light and you, you see, we can make it pretty small. We can make it like have a range of like 200 or less. Let's see. Some, sometimes I just like to get in there and make it really strong so I can actually see how reach it can, how far it can reach. <clears throat> and now I'll turn it back more to its realistic value. And um, this light picker is really handy. Like I think the the light is way too saturated because obviously it's been tweaked for uh, as outside lamp. So you can pick that eyedropper and just aim at something on the screen and pick a color that already exists. In in our case, the the window curtains. So now the color of the the spotlight matches uh, the one uh, of the window. And we can do the same for these guys here something that we can also do we can put these spotlights on the prefab itself like you it's a prefab you can like prefab is basically a mini map inside your map that you you can copy many times around so we can put these guys inside the prefab later just trying to get a feel for it like this kind of like tweaks really make a difference. I think it's worth spending time. Um, like you see how like very softly you see this, um, the light from the inside of the house hits the, um, the cobblestones on the ground there. It's just, it just feels like a nice little, little detail to have in a light in there. see what else we have here oh we have this this guy here oh I'm sure this is gonna look great with that with those cobblestones on the ground there and the wall um, being right next to it yeah it's the, it's in these city situations where um, doing this really pays off yeah sometimes I like to hide and hide and shift O hides all the entities so you can actually look at your environment uh, like it would look like in game. So it hides all the all the crap that all the entities and stuff. So you can actually see it better if you want to. But again, something that I I like 
to do a lot is hide and hide. So for this guy, we can turn off bake light indexing. I don't think we're gonna need the spec for this guy. And um, again, I, I cannot un, uh, overstate this. Be very careful with bake light indexing. Lights become um, essentially real time and really, really expensive. Do not let them overdraw on top of one, one another. If you do have one, be very careful. It's okay if like one or two intersect, but uh, try to avoid having more than one or two intersecting. Um, it gets not only gets real expensive, um, you might actually get a lot of artifacts too. These forward forward rendering engines do not know how to deal with too many lights intersecting, and uh, mm, put another. Some sometimes I like to do this, just literally just grabbing a light omni, and sort of like simulate bouncing. I did that a lot in my uh, daytime version. Yeah, there you go. You see how nice that, that looks? It just feels like the, la the light is bouncing around. And uh, you can argue, well, isn't the source engine radiosity system VRAD supposed to do that for you? Um, yes, of course, and it does it for you. But um, I always like to do this. Um, it makes the environment look a little bit more handcrafted. And... Um, you can e selectively exaggerate the bounce in certain areas of the map. Um, usually people cannot tell. Yeah, see, like just feels like the um, the light from the lamp on the top left there is hitting the white wall and um, is flooding the little path there, which is really nice for gameplay too. People will know that this is a path here. It's getting kind of dark here. So if you il illuminate this little um, funnel area, um, People will be able to not only see it more, but it just looks good. Um, I love um, bouncing, manually bouncing lighting when I do uh, lighting in my levels. It's just something that I've, like, I look at it almost like painting with light. And this is usually step two, right? We already have our predominant light sources in the map, which are, are these big orangey lamps and um, our moon of course which is this very soft blue um, that we're getting in the map here so that's it so, so that's the first slice of the map right so now we're doing the step two which is basically going in here and placing these light omnis or point lights depending on what engine uh, you, 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 you would use of course uh, source engine called it an omni light and um, I'm sort of like basically painting with light and almost like telling the engine how I want the uh, bounce light to look like. Like this is such a dark corner here. I actually wonder how it would look like with this window being lit, lit up. So I've done this a thousand times by now. You know the drill. Go to open, open your prefab that we already made before, save as, Browse to the material that the, the new material that you want to apply. Apply the, ma the material. Go back to your map, and then you can just browse and load the prefab. And uh, I did a selection. Again, Control Shift O selects all the um, instances of whatever you have selected. And I'm flying around the map, turning, rather unselecting the windows that I do not want to turn on basically there's a bunch of them you can turn it off turn it off so the ones that are selected right now they're gonna be glowing I wonder if I turn this, this this guy off as well yeah you don't want I don't think you want all the windows to be on I think that would be kind of weird and repetitive like if you walk around during nighttime not every single window has as um, a bright lit interior behind it, right? So if we do that too, um, I think our environment would look a little bit more b believable. Let's see this. Yeah, it's looking nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I do like that these guys being off. But I wonder if I turn that off. 
Mm, I like how that lone window is looking like there, and this here. We, we can place a spotlight on that spot on that spot later, just to light it up a little bit. See here, flying around the map, trying to get view of the place. These guys got a lot light on them now, looking good. Let me select the spotlight here and place it here. There you go. Uh, we'll turn snapping on. Oh, oops, open the console there. Turn snapping and boom, 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 boom. There you go. Yeah, nice. Look at that. Really feels like the light is the light from that interior is lighting this exterior area. And again, I really like how that spec hits the ground there. We can make a new ground material later. Like it would, I think it would make sense that um, like you we can argue it's really strong. Like an interior will never light an exterior that that much. But if if it's really dark, uh, you'd be surprised. And this is a game, so and it is CG, so um, we can take liberties for sure. Same thing here. We're doing exactly the same thing. This is a new pre prefab. It's a new window that I haven't turned into a night version yet. So opening the prefab, saving as pressing three, double click to select all faces, browse to the night material, shift T, saving, go back to the map, control alt O to select all instances, and there's a bunch of them, look at this, I actually like use this window a lot, yeah, you can really see around the map. I think I only have a few different windows really, um, it's just that um, I don't think you can tell the repetition as much because I selectively went in there and, and did different ones when you could tell that it's the same model. It's just getting re repeated. Even though they do look similar, I made a few frames look blue on some um, windows and others red. Sometimes that's enough to kind of like break up to the rep repetition there. So I'm basically going around the map now and turn unselecting exactly like we did before. Unselecting, deselecting, what's the term? Sorry, I have a shitty English, as I'm sure you could tell before by my accent. Oh, I, I wonder if we turn this off as well. I don't know if I want to have, I don't, I don't know if I want people to look inside these alleys. I didn't, I didn't give them much love, even though you can look inside there through those bars. Mm -hmm, looking good. Turn this guy off. Oh, maybe not. I mean, that little corner can look cool. Let's see. Browse and load the night version. Uh, whoops. There you go. Night version. And oh, we have to these two guys in here. Okay. Pressing Escape to remove our selection. Shift O to hide all entities. And remember, keep saving, guys. C Control S saves um, your map. Uh, that window has like some um, shading problems there. Okay, I can fix that later. Looking good. Let me put another spotlight here on this guy. Yeah, look at that. That looks awesome, man. Since it's so dark here, spotlight lighting like that always feels good. Mm, I'm not sure I like how that wing how that uh, sorry that wall is getting kind of like painted with too much light so moving that put another light here and uh, always be careful that um, the spotlight that you're placing or the or the light Omni is the same color as the source right and uh, like we did before if you want to make sure it is just go into the eye eyedropper and um, it so um, we're placing this kind of like yellowy yellowy orangey kind of like spotlight on the windows there yeah look, looking good <clears throat> I wonder if I turn off I'm, I'm a little bit paranoid with this baked light indexing um, Again, only turn on big light indexing on the lights that you really, really have to. So this guy, hmm, I wonder if it can be off. I think it can. 
what would the spotlight look look like up here? Mm, no, you know, getting much effect out of it. Let me make it stronger. Maybe a one. No, not feeling it. Let's see. I like to put the camera usually where player where players will be. But well, whatever. Let's just keep going around these windows and placing these spotlights here. Uh, strategically, you can rotate them down, by the way. But um, for now, I'm just leaving them them straight. But you can s give them a slight angle down. Let's see, big light indexing on or off on this guy. Hmm. I mean. In night scenes, I'm usually a fan of spec, right? I mean, that's what you want. You really want a lot of shine because uh, in the night scenes, there is a big absence of ambient lighting, of course. So to have spec, materials always look good. Yeah, see, like you can, like, like I said, you can just give them like a slight angle down. This does really nothing to illuminate up there, it's just the sky, of course. So uh, you really want to um, make sure that you get the ground and the wall in front of it. So you can just rotate it, it's fine. Oh, we should probably turn big light indexing on that spotlight. Sorry, on the Omni in there. Completely forgot. And like I said before, I only need to do it once and we'll propagate through all of the all of the instances of that uh, lamp there. Turn out by baked light indexing on that guy too. I think the moon might be a bit too bright. Let's try a one, two, one. I know that on the stock Half-Life Alex maps, they had the moon being pretty bright, but uh, they do not, on that map, they do not have as many um, directional lamps as we are doing here. So I think we can ease the moon brightness down to one here. Yeah, I think I'm liking how this is reading. Let's turn this guy off. Put another spotlight there. Yeah, I love all of these shadows that it's creating. I'm a fan of shadows, um, especially when they create these big, kind of like long, streaky lines that always looks good in games, especially when, when they're sharp. Really like how that shadow is hitting behind um, that forbidden sign there. Okay, looking good. We have these lights in here. I think they have a skin on them. They do. So they have an on version. And like, like I said before in the previous tutorial, uh, always make sure if you are using these Half-Life Alex um, props like I am here, uh, do remember to check the, the skin drop down because a lot of these props have looks on them or, well, skins. It depends on the engine. I've, I have worked with engines that this functionality is called look and um, other engines this functionality is called skin. What it is really is just another version. It's just basically the same asset with a different material applied to it. There you go. You can turn that on. Yeah, I kind of like that guy on. It looks good. We can add like a little light on it too. Oh. Wait, I selected the effect. Well, I guess we can have an effect there too. Put a light. Whoa, that's bright. We can tweak that. Bring that down closer to the source. And again, I should probably just create a prefab out of this guy. But I'm lazy. The guys, don't be lazy. <laughs> it's always time well well spent. Yeah, let me just pick. Use the eyedropper to pick the color. Although I do want to saturate it a little bit more. Uh, 50? How does that look like? Wow, even at 0 0.5, it's looking pretty bright. 0 0.2, range of 100. Mm. 
0.1 wow okay I'm really bringing this down even 0 0.025 you can see it pretty well so let's just leave it like that and by the way that flickering um, it happens because that's a real-time light even though uh, shadows are set to bake only um, yeah yeah see although I mean for this particular guy we can turn off shadows maybe although baked light only is fine I mean it's just those shadows just gonna get baked so that flickering that that, that you see in there will not happen in game after you bake because um, right here in the editor you are looking at a pre you're not looking at the real lighting um, because it's not baked right um, you're actually looking at the yes what search engine calls uh, VRAD it's VRAD 1, VRAD 2 and VRAD 3 I'm kind of new to this engine too but um, VRAD 2 is basically like a pre-viz light maps that you only see in the editor here and VRAD 3 is actually when you do like a full compile and uh, you actually get the uh, the light maps looking correctly, uh, but you can only see that uh, if you're running the game. So, um, in case you're thinking, yes, the answer is yes. They do have a system for how the lighting looks like in game, and a, a, s a different system for in editor lighting, so you can actually work. Um, which I appreciate that. Otherwise, um, you would need to work like you would with Gold Source and regular Source and other maps. Sorry, other engines and other editors where you need to fly around the map in um, full bright mode and have no real feedback with with our with how your lighting looks, which is really bad. So with this system, I mean, sure, it's not a hundred percent like like it, it it looks like in game, but it's pretty damn close. Like it's like ninety ninety five percent. Um. So VRAD two is editor lighting, and VRAD three is the correct full compile. How it looks like in game. Okay. So I'm just went around the map really quick as I rambled here I just went around the map tweaking some of the values in these lights you want them to be cheap and you want them to cast shadows only if you really need to only if you really need to so and the only way you can tell if you really need to or, or, or not is to turn shadows on and off and to actually mm -hmm. see how it looks like with shadows off if it looks acceptable with shadows off always stick with it always stick with shadows off if it really looks amazing with shadows on and you and you're willing to pay the um the price which is the performance impact of it and as long as there's not a lot of lights intersecting um you can leave it on but baked only is free as you know if a light is set to baked only I mean it's just gonna get baked so it's just gonna it's just gonna get baked into light maps so it's, it's it's virtually free okay let's see here got a bunch of spotlights already mm -hmm. just went to run the map so if you select many spotlights you can give them a name window spots press enter so uh, if we press the, this little button here it selects all of the it's almost like a selection set it selects all of the um, assets that you have inside that selection set which is kind of nice because I can just press that button and I can tweak the, the values of the light for all of them so say I want all, I, and I'm not happy with how bright all of these lights are. I can just select all of them and increase or decrease the brightness of all of them at the same time. And if the value is red, like you're seeing there, multiple different values, that's because uh, the value of both these lights are different. That's why you're not getting a read there. You can still input a parameter there. You can still put a one or a two 
there and if you do do that it's going to overwrite and it's going to set both lights or however lights you have selected to the to the new parameter that you that you just put in there yeah notice how i uh, i did the same as the other one i angled them damn i really like how it just hits the edge there <laughs> but um yeah that's not too bad is it guys Get out of here. Yeah, that's why I like to, to hide entities. I press and shift toe whenever I can. Uh, my OCD is killing me, but because the light isn't actually hitting the edge of the, the window frame correctly, but I do like how the light hits the ground. And by the way, if you want to go back and forth between local translation and world space translation, just tap tab. So if you do tab, you go between local and world and your gizmo changes. So obviously, since the spotlights have a little bit of, of a rotation on them, if I want to move them straight up, I'm going to have to turn on world uh, translation and just move those guys up like I just did. Really like how the light is how that rock is catching that light there. Let me increase this just a little a little bit. I really like how the light is hitting the, the rock there. 150 is looking pretty good. Remember the bigger you you have the range the more dangerous it becomes because you might um, be overdrawing the the light on top of lights that already exist around the around this area. So let me put a light omni here. Obviously the color is wrong. Again, I really do not like how light omnis have the same 3D icon as the spotlights. Because you need to select the light, look at the, either the outliner or the class on the object properties to see what kind of light th this is. It's kind of annoying and I hope they, I hope Val fixes that in the future. And uh, if you are watching this in the future and if your light omnis have their own 3D icon, then my apologies. But do enjoy how it's been fixed. Like I'm sure, I'm sure um, this engine is gonna, I mean, this is a foundation though, right? I, I doubt it's gonna get much different than this, but uh, I'm sure you're gonna, in the future, you're gonna keep seeing little tweaks here and there well, bug fixes, quality of life improvement. I really like that fast texturing mm -hmm. tool, but um, it does need like a uh, sanity pass. It does need, need like a quality of life uh, UI pass. I'm sure uh, it's one of the many tools that are going to be made better. Let's see. I wonder if it looks like if I just put a light here, the same one. And like I said before, I should have made a prefab. Let me turn the shadows off. And this guy, it always looks better with shadows on, but not always actually, because shadows might actually create lines where you don't want them to. So I'm just going to turn shadows off on both these guys. With shadows off, it basically becomes uh, an ambient light. Yeah, see, light just bleeds everywhere. Which you need to be careful with that, of course, because um, there's no occlusion in the light, right? So, um, and no shadows, so, which is fine. I think it's absolutely fine, it's cheap. Um, so, I wonder if I set shadows off on this guy too. I think this guy's kind of strong, but I am going to leave it for now. And I'm sure I'm going to end up coming back to this guy later. Okay. This corner is really dark, man, but there is like, I got to admit, I kind of like it. <laughs> You need to be careful, like, with corners being too dark like like this. Like, um, usually in games, 
like when I work on uh, like shipping shipping games, I avoid doing that. But this is like it's sort of a nice scene. It's not exactly a shippable game. Um, you don't need to obey to all the rules, of course. So remember that open window that it, we did on the past video, the blue one on the other building. I wonder if we can do the same here, only with this warm lighting instead. So we already found a nice solution for it, which was to put a Omni light inside the interior with a very, very small range, like a range of 50, so the, the light doesn't bleed outside. Yeah, like, like what, what we did here. And then grab another light, another Omni light. Yeah, see, with a bigger range, although 512 might be a bit too crazy. <laughs> Actually, let's see. Let me tweak that. Yeah, no, no, I can bring that down to 75 at least. All right. So what you want, so what this does is that it basically mimics the uh, subsurface scattering effect. Subsurface scattering light uh, coming through that uh, curtain. Because this curtain is essentially an opaque material, right? Like I did try to, to make it opacity, but, but it never looks good. Opacity always looks weird in games. But uh, there's a lot you can do with shaders and lighting. But uh, many people would actually like do like a uh, subsurface scattering shader. Although I don't think um, F Life Alex has a subsurface subsurface scattering shader for the environments. I could be wrong. I haven't explored it hundred percent. But look, like that. There's a lot you can simulate with lighting. Like it does feel like the lighting is pen penetrating the cloth there, and it's simulating the uh, subsurface uh, effect there. Especially seeing it from um, far away from the street here. Yeah, you forget it's a light. I mean, you know, of course, because you did look, you replace the light, like, you know, it's like this is all but a hack. But these two light omni effect, again, one lighting up the, the, the interior, so it needs to be brighter. And one outside, so this one outside, it, what, what it's doing basically is lighting up the curtains on the other side. On the uh, on the opposite side, just a little bit to to give it that nice that nice effect. It's not not looking too bad, huh? I think it's pretty. I love uh, this is the thing that I love about about this engine too. Although, to be honest, what I'm doing here uh, would work on pretty much any engine. I do love solutions like this. I do love solutions where the tools exist inside your editor, inside your engine, and that you can just get in there and mess around with it. I have an idea. I wonder if this is going to work. But look, if after five minutes you realize that uh, this is actually not looking as good as it, would, as it does, as I would like you to, uh, I'll, I'll just forget about it. You lost five minutes, it's fine. Yeah, this isn't looking too bad. I'm, I'm liking this. Um, so I do like when the tools at our disposal allow us to kind of like solve problems on the fly. And uh, engines like this are really powerful for that. It's all about the tools. Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm liking this. I think it's pretty effective. And it's all about a hack. Look at this, just tiny interior. <laughs> well, if you can call it an, an interior, just basically an extrude inwards. There we go. Make it smaller. I do not like how the light is bleeding outside. That light is not supposed to bleed outside too much. Yeah, much better already, right? I do like how the folds are getting kind of dark on the um, on the opposite edge and brighter near the uh, the the middle. It's crazy what you can do with just like two two tiny light omnis if you know what what you're doing like this, and if you tweak the your parameters like like that. Yeah, there you go. And something that you can do later as well, on the outer light, you can always give it a little bit of fog. 
and uh, we're gonna do a fog pass later. Looking good. Hide the effect and let's see what this like looks like. Like I said before, guys, like sometimes when I finish my pass of all of these lights, I like to go around the map and triple check the values that I didn't screw up. I don't have shadows being on on lights that do not need to put be on. And uh, when that's done, now we are basically starting a new phase.